No one knows exactly when, but at some stage people say, gee, this in actual fact is risky stuff. We want higher, uh, much higher rates of return for it. In other words, the interest rate payable on uh, the sovereign debt has to be much greater than it is today. One wag. On the, said, the bond market is looking for a, a financial means of covering a high risk. Um, the, cu- the, the point will come, says the BIS, and it seems to me they're quite right, is that, when, uh, is that people in bond markets will suddenly say, goodness me, this stuff is much riskier than we thought uh, because governments are producing so much of it. The, the, the quantity, the supply of this stuff is increasing so much. To increase the supply of something is to decrease its value. Uh, to decrease its value means we're going to take a loss on this, how to cover ourselves with the risk. Well, the interest payments it makes have to be much higher than they are at the moment. One wag says, look, traditionally... Um, uh, one regards Treasury securities in the United States as risk-free yields. In actual fact, they're becoming yield-free risks. That's to say, what we're being paid for this stuff is so minuscule relative to the actual risk that it really bears or will begin to bear in, in subsequent years that we just have to be properly paid um, for that risk. Chris Leithner, the report or the study by the Bank of International Settlements also apparently says that official debt figures in the West are quote, very misleading, unquote. Mm. Now, this was the accusation that was pointed at Greece, that when it joined the EU, its debt levels were actually three times higher than what they actually said it was. That's right. Leading to this current crisis. Is this study saying the same thing about other OECD nations, like oh. Great Britain and others? Oh, precisely right. And again, come back to the United States, which is the biggest, uh, the, the, the 500-pound gorilla which looks behind all of this. Greece, at the moment, is uh, attracting attention because it's a relatively small country with severe problems, but there are much, much bigger countries with equally severe problems, such as the United States. Uh, Its on-balance sheet national debt is on the order of $14 trillion, which sounds like a lot of money. What doesn't appear in its financial statements are uh, social security obligations to be paid for decades to come, Medicare pharmaceuticals, um, the bank bailouts and whatnot, and that pushes the off-balance sheet total national debt closer to estimates will vary. So, uh, the bidding begins at $70 trillion, between $70 and $90 trillion. Uh, that's what he's getting at there in, in terms of that report, that what appears on official financial statements is only a small portion of the actual obligations that these governments have committed themselves, what politicians have committed the state to pay pensions, medical benefits, uh, and so on. And as those costs become much more um, uh, apparent... Um, the, the, the Obama health, so-called health care plan, which was passed, what, last week or a or fortnight or so ago, um, each time a mammoth uh, bill like that is passed, the proponents say, oh, yes, but this is going to help to, uh, to decrease uh, the debt. They've been saying that since the 1930s. At no time has it been true. Um, at some stage, again, people have to wake up and say these sorts of things simply can't continue. The world is drowning in debt. Um, and uh, alas, when people drown in debt, they at some stage cease to breathe. Uh, is this report indicating a, a, a rarely often heard word, hyperinflation? That's um, an extreme result. My guess is that, no, that's not going to occur. In other words, um, Zimbabwe is not our future, nor is the 1930s. What is our future? The 1970s, in which a lot of people in Australia would heave a sigh of relief. Actually, the losses that investors sustained in the 1970s were greater than the losses they sustained in the 1930s. Now, in terms of human suffering, the 1970s, we, we suffered through, we barely made it through Gough Whitlam, then came even worse Malcolm Fraser. So it was a tough decade. We mustn't uh, underestimate that for a, for a split second. But in terms of uh, the misery uh, compared to the 1930s, it wasn't the same. And uh, uh, in the 1930s, Australia wasn't nearly as uh, badly off as countries like Canada, the UK, uh, and so on. So the answer to the question is, is hyperinflation in our future? I've been wrong on all manner of things, and I haven't a crystal ball, but my guess is, is no. The, then this report, it does say current fiscal f- policy is unsustainable in every country in its study. That's right. Uh, unsustainable. The drastic improvements in the what they call the structural primary balance will be necessary to prevent debt ratios from exploding. They're using terms like, you know, uh, uh, say, say Great Britain, debt levels to 300% of gross domestic product by 2040. Uh, it's hard to imagine that level of debt. Um, it's hard to imagine how that actually affects an individual. Well, to give an example, Alistair Darling was about a fortnight ago on BBC TV. He let slip. Uh, people call them gaffes, but occasionally politicians do tell the truth uh, and they tell the uncomfortable truth. Uh, the uh, Labour government in the UK has promised not to touch things like uh, spending on um, pensions, 
uh, medical benefits, the National Health Service, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, and uh, he lets slip that given that certain things are simply off limits to cuts, he says what remains of the budget is going to have to be cut, quote, much more savagely than Mrs. Thatcher cut things in the early 1980s. Now, it's a misnomer. She didn't do much cutting. Uh, she decreased the rate of increase of... Um, uh, of government expenditure. In other words, that's a, a deceleration rather than um, uh, an actual cut of the budget. She trimmed a bit of middle class welfare, not much else. But the point I'm getting at is that the um, the social memory that uh, people like Margaret Thatcher cut things really uh, isn't true. Uh, the point you've just made is that simply for the UK to get back to the pickle in which it found itself pre-2007 would entail cuts that have never occurred uh, at any time uh, in British history. So, it's, again, we're back to that point that uh, I raised about um, uh, Kenneth Kotlikoff and, and the Fed to say, well, you can't cut this because that's politically impossible. You can't cut that. You can't cut the other. And yet, um, what we're looking at here, well, uh, I'll put it in, in private sector terms, that if the same sorts of obligations that exist in this country on company directors were applied to politicians, here's a fanciful thought, here's something that uh, puts a, a warm glow in my heart, um, they'd all be basically imprisoned for trading whilst insolvent, that there's such a gulf between the rules which apply to each, that uh, perhaps one solution to our problem is that, well, whatever the rules are going to be, let's um, uh, put politicians under the same sorts of rules that apply to the rest of us. Two questions from listeners. My guest, by the way, is Chris Leithner from the investment group Leithner & Associates. It's three to eight on the East Coast, three to six on the West Coast. Are interest rates here in Australia going up quickly so that the government or the, the Reserve Bank has room to drop them again if they really just sort of try and work the levers? In other words, if, if, if inflation is up and down, if, if we're actually entering a really quite a rocky period... Uh, the short answer is I don't know. My guess is that that's a possibility. Um, low interest rates are poison. Low interest rate, uh, a pr an interest rate is a price. It's a, it's, a, it's a type of price. Prices emit signals. If governments intervene such that prices emit false signals, that confuses people and uh, causes them to make mistakes. So that uh, uh, we have in this country uh, a gargantuan coalition of inflation which demands why, because their livelihood depends upon it, artificially low rates of interest, high property prices, high prices um, for stocks and bonds and so on. Those, it's, it, the problem is not uh, an increase of interest rates. The problem is the consequences of low interest rate. By lowering them, uh, you cause people to make mistakes. When the consequences of those mistakes become clear, as they have, for example, in California, where property prices have fallen by 50 percent and you see massive foreclosures and so on, what do governments do? Rather than step aside, uh, let people clean up the mess and learn lessons from it, uh, in effect, they say to the, uh, the drunk, let's go on a pub crawl. What you need now, uh, given that your punch drunk is another stiff drink or more methan methamphetamines or whatever the, the, the analogy is going to be, so that uh, I wouldn't put it past the Reserve Bank to try, again, uh, to artificially depress rates of interest, but that's going to make problems worse rather than better. All right. A question you may not be able to answer, but uh, Steve from Brisbane has sent a text message saying, can you confirm that the derivative bets handled by the Bank of International Settlements exceeds $565 trillion U.S.? And uh, do you know if that's true or not? Uh, I know that derivatives out there, um, the, the, t the sum total, are in the trillions. Now, they net one another out. In other words, people are taking a bet. One person says, I bet that X will occur. The other says that uh, X will not occur. And so that whatever the event is, then a lot of these things, so it, it, these things are in the, uh, in the trillions of dollars. Banks have them, um, uh, Australian banks, uh, particularly to do with um, uh, hedging of, um, uh, of the currency and so on. I can't quote on, on $500 trillion, but certainly the sum total of all of these things out there is in the surely in the scores, if not the low hundreds of trillions. I have to leave it there. Interesting times. Chris Leithner, thank you once again. Thanks for having me. Chris Leithner is from the investment group Leithner and Associates.